So to start using Desmos Polygraph Activity, we're going to start by going to teacher.desmos.com. And this is kind of going to be your launching ground as a teacher for creating your own activities or finding other ones that people have made. In particular, the one I'm looking for today is called Polygraph, so I'm just going to search that. And if you look, all of these are different ones that different teachers have created. You can see who they're created by, and you really can access a lot of content on here. We're going to start with the one that I first used in class, which was looking at rational functions, because that for me is a unit where students really need to have sophisticated communication skills about it. So to preview the content to see what you would be showing your students without actually having any, any students to use it with, you'd hit this learn more button right here. So if I click on that, what that's going to give me is, first of all, an address to share it with other people. So if you're using this as a PLC, this is a great opportunity to share that. It'll also tell you a description of how that teacher intended it to be used. And then it'll show you all the graphs that are used so you can see if the features you're wanting are in there or not. So this looks good to me, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on that same one again. And normally for you guys, you would hit new session. I actually already have a session started, so I'm going to hit this session right here. That's going to bring me to this page. And this is a page that normally I project up so my students can see it. So it gives them two really important pieces of information. It gives them the website to go to, which is student.desmos.com, and then it gives them their class code, and that's how they're going to access my class. And you're going to be able to view any students who are in here. So Einstein's already in here waiting for a partner. So what I'm going to do now is show you the other side of it is how students log in. So they're going to go to student.desmos.com and enter this code, E7ZR. So I have this in another browser. Here's student.desmos.com. E7ZR and submit. And they don't need to have an account to do this. It all works through yours. So enter your name. Maybe this person is Newton. And they're going to begin. So the polygraph leads them through what I like to call a game of guess who, if you remember that game from back in the day. You're going to pick a person that's special to you for whatever reason. So maybe I'll pick this girl and say next. And now my partner is going to ask me yes or no questions about that person. So does your partner or does your person have long hair? I look at my person, she does, so I would say yes. And now I can see who my partner is eliminating based on that. And so they're eliminating anyone who doesn't fit that mold. Now they ask another question. Is your person's shirt a solid color? Mine is, so I say yes. Now I see them eliminate anyone who doesn't have a solid color. So this is going to keep going until the computer identifies the person you picked, and that's the basic round of how you would play this. So we're going to continue, and it's going to match you up with somebody else in the class. And it's going to show you other questions that students are asking to give you an idea. And let's get Einstein going here. So now we've got two partners. So I'm going to select a graph that's special to me for whatever reason. Um, maybe I choose this one and hit next. And now I'm going to wait for my partner to ask questions. If I'm the other partner, here's my shot to ask questions. So these are all the graphs that are possibilities. What I'm going to do here is start with maybe something like, um, does your graph have a hole in it? And hit send. And now I wait for an answer. So in my other browser, does my graph have a hole in it? Mine does, yes. And now my partner would be eliminating choices. So anything that does not have a hole in it, they would then eliminate because they know that can't be an answer choice. If they eliminate one incorrectly by accident, they can always unselect it, and then they can eliminate all those answers. So now they've narrowed it down more. And they keep asking questions until they get to some kind of a solution. Now from a teacher perspective, you do get some monitoring capabilities, which is nice. So I can see all the games that are in progress, any games that were completed. I can see anyone who's waiting for a partner and doesn't have one. And I also can see these two questions at the top. And these are going to be asked to students as they wait for a partner so that they won't ever be left with completely idle time. So that is something nice from a classroom management perspective that this offers. When kids finish around, it will just match them with a new partner, and it can keep going on and on like that for as long as you want it to. 